Okay, so if you're here, you want to know how to add Monaco Editor to a Next.js project. And I figured I would do it because I, I've been working on this editor here and I uh, need to add Monaco. Uh, if you've been following along, this is me making my own Dev2 based CMS. Uh, here's the uh, repo if you want to follow along. And also I pushed a recent commit um, that uh, does a little bit of cleanup from my live stream because things got a little messy at the end. But I have figured it out and I wanted to share the solution. So uh, here we go. Uh, basically, we have to follow the instructions that were worked out by this guy. Um, I don't know if exactly this config is going to work because it doesn't do the transpilation of node modules. But um, we're gonna we're gonna work through it, and I'm pretty I'm pretty confident that it will some form of this is gonna work. Um, so, z God damn it! Sorry about that. So. Zeit next CSS is, is the old way of um, adding the CSS loader from Zeit uh, with their special customized stuff. <coughs> uh, by default, Zeit, uh, or at least next year's 9.x um, is zero config with CSS. But when you add in the Monaco Webpack uh, plugin, um, it's going to deopt from that CSS loader because it's going to detect that, you know, Monaco is doing some weird shit. Um, so... Uh, you know, you got to add it back in, uh, and that's the that's the that's the core idea. Um, I don't really need next fonts, but obviously, if you want to load fonts as well, you might need to restore uh, Next.js fonts. So let's go ahead and um, just follow you know these 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 instructions, uh, and we'll see how that works out. Um, so I have this uh, editor running on localhost, and this is the code that I'm running locally as well. Uh, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to just uh, start installing the dependencies. I think I have a lot of them, so uh, this will be relatively quick. So we'll add in Monaco editor or pack plugin. We'll add in Zite next CSS. Uh, and then we'll also add in React Monaco editor. Uh, you don't actually need to use this. You can just use Monaco Editor itself. That's the raw one. But you're then going to end up writing React bindings anyway. So you might as well just, you know. Uh, use the one that someone else has done for you. I don't have a strong opinion anyway. <coughs> okay, so um, while that's loading, uh, we're going to start on our Next.js config. So here, uh, it's basically an empty config. Um, I've uh, left in a few notes for myself, but uh, we can start essentially from scratch. And we're going to add in the with CSS higher order function, I guess. Uh, as well as the Monaco Editor Webpack plugin. Uh, obviously, add in the fonts thing if you need it. Okay, so then we're going to add this in. Uh, and I think it's actually as simple as that. Um, and, I, and I also want to add in a markdown uh, language as well. In fact, these are all the languages I want to support. Um, but let's just go with the, the simple one first. And since we're not using any of this other stuff, we can get rid of it. And then we're going to add the with CSS wrapper. If you can hear some humming in the background, that's my <laughs> fans on my laptop spinning up. Okay. So now uh, Next.js has detected some changes, and but we're, we're not done yet. We also need to go edit... Uh, the editor page and introduce all these editors. Okay, so let's go in over here. Import editor. You also need to import uh, dynamic from next dynamic, uh, and that's because uh, the React Monaco editor is written in such a way that it expects to be rendered uh, client side, but uh, we're doing server side rendering. So we need to tell Next.js, hey, don't render this. Uh, this is a dynamic import that you load after uh, the server-side render stuff. Uh, yeah, <laughs> that's my best explanation. I'm sorry if I uh, if I screwed that up. Okay, so uh, uh, ID equals editor. That's that's where I left uh, the comment for myself. And let's kill that. And then let's bring in the editor. And that's pretty much it. 
uh, I am using TypeScript, so I have this issue, but we're just going to insist that it is there. Oh, how do I, um, I, I can just do TS ignore. And that would be solving it. Um, it has workers that are solved like that. Okay, so uh, just to, just to, just as a final step, um, I see. Okay, so what I actually want out of these guys is that I want the markdown. I want the mark markdown language to be specified where it's not really specified here. Anyway, uh, th those are optimizations. Uh, let me just explain a little bit what's happening here. Um, so Monaco uh, does syntax highlighting in web workers. And uh, so obviously you need to modify your Webpack plugin to produce those web workers. And then you also need to load it from the right paths. Um, and this being Next.js, everything is in like a weird, you know, uh, setup that Monaco doesn't expect. So we got to tell it exactly how to how to load stuff uh, with setting the get worker URL global. Okay, so um, hopefully that worked. Uh, I have not actually tested this. I have tested a, an alternative version, but uh, let's actually see if it works. So the first thing to check for, yeah, so this will happen, right? Built-in CSS support is being disabled due to custom CSS. Um, that's what happened to me on my live stream, if you saw that. That was a disaster. But now we've actually restored Next.js's um, system with this. Okay, so then the other, uh, this, is a, this is another thing I found um, working with uh, this issue, which is uh, invalid post CSS plugin found. Um, I still don't actually know the cause of this uh, because I'm using Tailwind in my projects here. Um, so this is where I need to, um, I stop trusting uh, the instructions that were given by uh, this guy who's, who's, who's still been very helpful. And we need to bring in this next transpile modules dependencies. Um, and, and that's, and that's kind of the recommended way that uh, Joe Haddad from the Next.js team um, recommends to do this. So we're going to start also merging some of these instructions over here. And I'm, I'm going to write this up at the end, but uh, I figured I would also do a, I guess a recording of this um, to show that uh, I guess it can be done. All right, so uh, no, we're, now we're gonna uh, adopt next configs, uh, this, this next config from uh, Joe, because I know that it works because I actually tried it. I was just hoping that uh, the other thing worked. Um, but I, I suspect the final solution will have to be some combination of this. So now we're transpiling modules. Uh, and this, I mean, this intuitively makes a little bit more sense because uh, Monaco Editor includes uh, CSS imports. And uh, and so, um, you know, Next.js is not going to de-opt from uh, that. All right, there we go. And I might need to hang on to this. So, because Joe did not take care of the, the worker, um, the service workers, uh, the web worker stuff. So I am going to just use his instructions for this one. Um, but, you know, I was kind of reserve judgment on the, the web worker stuff for now. Mm. Okay. We'll just see how things go. I'm not the most confident on how this works now. But I'm, I mean, I'm reasonably sure that it's going to work out. Oh, uh, we do have to in install next transpile modules. Uh, stick a D at the end, even though, I, I mean, I already messed up some of these uh, dev dependencies and stuff. So um, I'll, I can fix that later. <coughs> do, 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 do. Oops, I have some spare CSS that I forgot I had left in there. Uh, I should have cleaned that up, my bad. Okay. So let's re refresh this. 
we should see a very squished editor. Uh, that's usually what happens. And this compiling stage, that's, uh, that's it compiling <laughs> Monaco. Uh, so usually in local dev, it's going to take a while uh, to, to load it for the first time. Uh, but that's, as far as I can tell, that's not a problem. Um, we're, if this succeeds, we're going to um, go over and try to include the uh, web worker optimizations that uh, were introduced by uh, the other guy. What's his name? E Elliot? Yeah. Uh, we're going to try and introduce those web worker optimizations, but we just want to see this work for now. Um, so I think this worked uh, because you can see a really microscopic uh, Monaco instance over there. Let's actually see it come out. Come out, come out. Is that it? Okay. Um, let's have high 500 px. Nope, that was not it. Height 500 px, maybe. Uh, all right, so let's actually just steal some uh, config from the docs. React Monaco editor. Okay, sorry, scroll down too far. There we go. Yep, yep, specify all this crap. Um, uh, I don't want to take care of that. Okay, uh, instead of code, I have, let's insert some default code. I have post body over there. All right, uh, that should reload. See, it's a lot faster. And now we have Monaco working in Next.js, which is pretty cool. Uh, okay, so this is actually JavaScript. I want Markdown. Hang on. So let me just check if there's some errors uh, due to web workers. So a lot of these are just my really shitty, um, really shitty uh, Chrome extensions. I got to figure out which one that is. But here is the web worker trying to be found and failing. So let's actually try to resolve that. So what we're going to do is go back to the next config, and we're going to just merge the recommendations from both Joe and Elliot. Um, so we have languages over here. I'm going to stick that in there. And then we're also going to say file name, static name, uh, and, and sort of give it like a nice format for the file name. OK, so now that we have a predictable output for this for the web workers, um, we can also import them over here in the editor. Uh, and I think I can just uncomment this and kind of make it work. So I, I did do a restart there because anytime you change the next config JS, you got to restart to pick up the changes. Uh, this should probably cause a rebuild uh, because that's how things roll, I think. Yeah. All right, so that'll take a while, but uh, you know, I think. The next step, so if this works, that would mean that we have a decent like web worker enabled setup, which means that uh, our syntax highlighting over here is going to be pretty responsive, as well as any other like IntelliSense and other stuff that we want to add in future. We can do it in the browser in here. Um, those are going to be subject for future explorations by me because um, I do want to enhance my writing experience. Okay, so... Um, while that's going, I'm also going to tell you my future plans. Uh, I currently have this in JavaScript mode. I want to make that into Markdown. I want to add some basic options. Uh, I wish I noted down those options because um, it's just stuff like turning off the minimap. They have a minimap uh, by default, which is a little bit annoying. All right, looks like the editing's done. I mean, the <laughs> looks like the compiling is done. That takes a while for the first time. Um, yeah. 
I don't know much to say about that. Maybe it's just a, maybe there's a way to optimize it, but at this point, if it works, I'm happy. Whoop. Those chunks. Source maps don't work, but um, at least the web worker stuff is gone. Um, so let's actually change this to markdown and see that work. Oh, it looks like the source maps are turned off by default in, in React Monaco Editor, which is uh, nice to have for sure. Hello. This is markdown. And this is a link, HTTPS link.com. Oh, okay. Well, syntax highlighting could be tweaked for this one for sure. But um, hey, you know, we have uh, markdown syntax highlighting as well as code fences. Uh, I like this a lot where you can actually, you know, code with some certainty that uh, you are getting the correct syntax highlighting for code fences. Um, so that's good. And as far as I wanted to go for this video, um, I'm going to also clean up this, this editor in, in subsequent live stream videos. <laughs> Sorry about those annoying noises. That's my speaker. Um, but I think, I think, I think, I think that's, uh, that's how you add um, Monaco to Next.js. Not too bad. Oh, that's, that's the minimap. Okay, let me show you how to turn off the minimap. You go to options um, and then you use TypeScript, which is awesome. False. No, it's minimap and then it's visible. Uh, visibility. All right, let's look at the options. Monaco editor. The docs are not the best, but at least they have docs. There we go. Um, API docs. Mini map uh, options um, create editor dot create so it's editor dot create there we go and then the options are here I standalone editor construction options and here are all the options that are available we want mini map and we want to turn this off so mini map is consists of enabled there we go. Why didn't I just figure that out from the beginning? Okay, so uh, let me just show you. This is the mini map. As you as you type it, it just generates, and then you can auto scroll and pick there. Um, I don't know why it's on by default, but here's how to turn it off. And now no more mini map, which is fantastic. Okay, yeah, um, that's it. Thank you for watching. <laughs>